Good morning, and welcome to Central Church of Christ. So glad to have you watching our virtual service this morning. Um, as we announced last week, we talked about it last week, and of course you all know we have a lot of our church members have been battling COVID. Um, the good news is we're thankful that so many of them are, are, have gotten better. We're thankful for that. Uh, we do have several members still um, struggling with COVID illness. I just continue to remember all of them. Um, of course, as you all know, um, especially member of the Brock family, uh, Rusty and Audrey have been in the hospital. They're both home now, doing a little bit better. We're thankful for that. But as you know, Audrey's mom passed away last week. Um, just be sure to keep that family in your prayers. I don't know their arrangements at this time. Um, as soon as we find those out, we'll let you know via reminds. Um, just be sure to keep them in your prayers. It's been a very difficult week for them. Just keep them in your prayers. As well as everyone else from our church has been affected by COVID. Um, as we've announced for a couple of weeks now, if you are homesick, if you need anything, please let us know. We want to help you. If you need groceries or drugstore stuff or anything like that, please let us know so we can help you. Um, just continue to remember all, all of our family. So hopefully we can be back together next Sunday. That is our plan. Um, we're having our building. Our building's been um, sanitized. We had Surf Pro come sanitize the building. Um, so hopefully next Sunday we can be back together. One thing, if you don't mind, stay out of the building this week. Um, Surf Pro advised us that once they do their, their sanitizing, to stay out of the building for seven days. So if we do that, we can be back together next Sunday. So we're looking forward to seeing everyone. Again, welcome to our services. We're so thankful for Jordan. Um, to do these virtual services takes a lot of work. So we appreciate Jordan's work, and he's got a wonderful lesson to us for us today. So we're, we're happy for that. And, and again, appreciate Jordan, all of his work. Um, the only other thing I have is I've got to give a shout out to Cindy Renfro. Uh, Cindy, gra Cindy graduated, Cindy retired last week from the hospital. So we're happy for Cindy. Um, congratulations on your retirement. To be honest, a little bit jealous, but um, congratulations on your retirement. I know you're gonna have a wonderful time. So again, welcome to our services. Welcome to Central. Glad to have everyone home watching. Um, it's going to be a great day. Good morning, everybody. I'm certainly privileged and honored to be with y'all today. It's been a long time since Benita and I have actually been to church, March actually. But uh, uh, Jordan called me and, and asked me if I would give the opening prayer, and I, I'm more than happy to do that. I want y'all to know we've missed y'all. And all of us are doing virtual service today. We, we may not be together physically, but we're all one heartbeat. And the loving church family that we are. And I just want y'all to know how much we appreciate you. And at this time, we'll go to our, uh, God in heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the many blessings you've given us. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for Jesus Christ, your son who suffered, bled, and died for all of us. And Heavenly Father, we're in a very trying time for the pandemic, and we have many that are suffering. We have Audrey Brock, who lost her mother this week. And Heavenly Father, we, we ask that you be with Audrey and Rusty and their family because she's grieving and we ask that you you heal her heart and comfort her only as you can, dear God, and her whole family. And dear Heavenly Father, all those that have suffered or are suffering with the coronavirus, we ask you that you heal them, be with them. We have many in this church that's had the coronavirus and we ask you to be with each and every one and be with the doctors and Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you intervened with the vaccination treatment and the testing. Without your intervention, there would be no cure to this terrible disease. And Heavenly Father, we, we pray that you will continue to intervene as people get the vaccinations that uh, everyone get it in a timely manner. Dear God, we, we ask you to be with our nation as we are in trying times. We have change of government. And dear God, we ask that we all be Americans and we support our government. 
but at no time should we ever sacrifice morality and what's right, because if we do what's right, we'll be on the side of God and we'll be one nation under God. And dear God, we ask you to be with our military, bless them and those that are abroad and stationed here in the United States, be with them and their families. And dear God, we're thankful for our deacons and elders and the leadership that they provided during this last year, 2020. And also with Jordan and the lessons he's provided us and the support that he gives everyone here. And last but not least, our church family, such a loving family. As I said, we may not be here physically, but together we're one heartbeat and you know what all of our heart is. And we ask you to love us, dear God, and we know that you do. And we know that we could never love you as much as you love us. But our church family is a loving church family. And we ask you to be with each and every one here. Bless us, be with us, forgive us our sins. In Christ's name, amen. Okay, guys, we're going to take the Lord's Supper again, just like we did last week. And I thought about a, a verse this week that kind of reminds me of the way things are right now because I know we normally take the Lord's Supper in the church building and we see all of our church family around us, um, but we really haven't been able to see our church family lately and we're kind of scattered around in different houses right now. But there's something really neat that we remind ourselves about at the Lord's Supper and just a really quick verse uh, from, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about this. Paul said, you are the body of Christ. Each one of you has a part in it. When we come to the Lord's Supper and we eat the bread, it's also a reminder that we are part of Jesus' body. He's giving us his body and he's saying, eat this, you're a part of me. Drink my blood, you're a part of me. And so everywhere we go, when we go to school, when we go to work, here in our home, we're, we're always part of the body of Jesus. And that always keeps us connected. And we're always a part of the other Christian brothers and sisters. Um, even some that, you know, we've never met all of them. People all around the world that are in Jesus. People that have died, you know, grandparents and people that we love. They're a part of the body of Jesus. And, and this Lord's Supper, it's, it's almost like the, the banquet feast of the king when a king has a great banquet hall and he throws a big feast and he's victorious and everybody is celebrating the king and, and following the king. This is Jesus' feast and everybody is here and we're all a part of it. So when we take the Lord's Supper today, let's just think of the fact that that we're all still connected to our Christian family, that we're all together in Jesus, and um, that we're all here at the same table together. Well, let's pray. Father, we love you so much, and we just thank you for all the ways that you are guiding us in Jesus, the way that you saved our lives uh, through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross when he took the punishment that we really should have had all the, the sins that, that we had committed, all the punishment for that fell on Him. And, and now we are saved. We can be with you forever. We can be with all of our Christian brothers and sisters together forever through Jesus, because of Jesus. And we thank you and we love you and we praise you. As we take this bread right now, Father, just remind us that it's that body that we're all a part of. In Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go ahead and open your cup part. And Father, we thank you so much for this blood, for this 
fruit of the vine that represents the blood of Jesus, that washes away every single sin, makes us completely new, that puts our sins away from us, and makes us able to be together with you, holy and perfect and pure. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Jesus, we praise you for the sacrifice that you made for us. And we worship you and we follow you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. And amen. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I have to be honest with you this week. I'm, I'm getting a little stir crazy. I'm starting to miss some of your faces. And, um, you know, I just uh, I can't wait till we get back together face to face again. What a blessing this is to be able to connect wherever you are, whenever you are in this way. But I sure look forward to to being together uh, with our family again. Hopefully that is coming soon. But uh, today we're going to continue a series that we started last week. Last week we started a series of lessons on the parables of Jesus Christ. And it's really neat that we're going to go to a completely different parable today, but we're going to pick up right after the one that we talked about last week. Last week we were in Matthew chapter 13, and you remember how Jesus sat in the boat there on the seaside of Galilee, and he, he spoke to the crowds that were along the shore, made a nice little amphitheater for himself there on the shore. And uh, he spoke many things in parables, the text says. Well, last week we talked about the parable of the sower and the, and the soils and you know, how we receive the Word, if we're receiving the Word, how we listen to Jesus. Well, right after he told that parable, he went on, it says, and he told them another parable. And today we're going to talk about that very next parable. Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse 24. Uh, again, it's um, about a sower. Uh, again, it's about some seeds and, and some planting in the field. But we'll get to all that here in just a second. I want to just kind of set this up with a tension that we have to live with as Christians, with the problem that we are aware of in our day-to-day -day lives. And it goes something like this, you know, there is no name above the name of Jesus. There is no authority or rule over the reign of our God. He is sovereign. He is above all things. And at the cross, Jesus won every victory. He, he defeated death. Uh, death has no more power. Death has no more sting. And we, we, we are kings in His kingdom. We reign. We, we have authority under the name of Jesus. Every enemy must bow to the name of Jesus. And so we, we hold our head up and we charge forward in victory in all things. And yet, and yet you know, Christians still are mistreated. Christians still, we suffer abuse just like everybody else does. Christians still fall ill just like everybody else does. Christians contract cancer. Uh, Christians contract COVID. Christians contract autism. Every affliction that people have to deal with, Christians also have to deal with. We've been set free from the enemy. We, we have authority over the forces of darkness as we are under the name of King Jesus, and He has won victory over all things. And yet, you are used to living in this tension as a Christian. It's something that you, you've just had to get used to as a Christian, that, that we live lives on a higher plane in the kingdom of God, and yet we are still in this world, this world that's infected with sin, and sin has consequences for everything that it touches. Whether we're guilty of that sin or not, we are bombarded with the effects of sin every single day. And so here in this parable, what Jesus is going to speak to, it's this challenge of being in the world, but not of the world, of keeping our eyes on the harvest while also dealing with weeds in the meantime. We're walking in victory, and yet we are at the same time suffering temporary losses in this life. And so how do we react to that? Let's dive right in. Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse 24. He put another parable before them, saying, 
the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? Now, anybody, especially you know here in the south where it's nice and warm and wet, anybody who's ever tried to landscape or grow a garden, you know about weeds. You can imagine the frustration of, of this, finding weeds all throughout the field, especially you know, if somebody intentionally went and planted a whole bunch of weeds, man, that's a nightmare. But I want to point out the fact that this is actually more criminal than it might appear on the surface. This is even worse than what we might be thinking when we read this parable. Uh, in the Greek text, there is actually a specific word for weed that is used here, and, and it points to a specific type of weed, uh, one that's known as darnel. Darnel is the only plant in the grass family that actually has poisonous seeds. It looks very much like wheat, and it can be confused for wheat, but you don't need to eat this stuff. It has poisonous seeds, and, and some of the symptoms uh, of eating this stuff, you know, violent nausea, um, even death. This can cause death uh, if humans eat it, uh, if livestock were to eat it. You know, this is not just playing a prank on some farmer. Uh, this is seriously putting people's health at risk, livestock health at risk. This is a serious uh, financial hit to this farmer. He's going to have to uh, spend time and pay laborers to go through the crop and, and to take this very dangerous plant uh, out of the, the, the weed, uh, out of the wheat. Um, so so this, this is a big deal here. And the image that Jesus really wants to get across then is you have this healthy crop that the master has planted but all throughout the enemy has gone and he's sown this poisonous counterfeit in an attempt to ruin the crop. A poisonous counterfeit. Remember that. And Jesus goes on to explain a little bit later, you know, the, the wheat, that, those are the sons of the kingdom. The son of man is the one who planted the wheat. Uh, he says the weeds are the sons of the evil one. The devil went and planted these in the field. And so again, here's where we live. Here's where we live, trying to do our best to grow up under the authority of Jesus Christ, trying to grow in the kingdom and produce fruit in the kingdom. The kingdom has already come. We are living in the kingdom today. And yet, all throughout this good world, you have these poisonous counterfeits that are sown by the devil. These weeds that are, 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 are their, their point is that the, 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 what the attempt of the the devil is to do is to draw us away and, and to confuse us as to what is weed and what is wheat and, and to harm us and destroy the crop uh, by planting these weeds all throughout. Uh, it's no surprise that the Bible talks about counterfeits a good bit. If, if this is what Satan is trying to do to ruin the master's field, uh, the Bible warns us a good bit about poisonous counterfeits, even in the church. You know, we're not just talking about godless people here, but there's counterfeits even in the church. Uh, both Jesus and Paul, they talk about counterfeits, Christ, counterfeit Christs, people that pretend to be the Messiah and come to lead people away in that way. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul warns about counterfeit apostles, counterfeit angels, counterfeit ministers. Acts chapter 20, Paul visits the Ephesian elders and he says you need to be aware of the wolves that are coming to, to tear people away, to, to destroy the flock. He says even among yourselves, counterfeit elders there in Ephesus. Revelation 2, Jesus talks about the blasphemy of some who claim to be Jews but are actually of the congregation of Satan. Even in the early days of the church there, they dealt with a good bit of counterfeit. And maybe the most poisonous of all, the most dangerous of all counterfeits, Paul would talk about a counterfeit gospel. He would talk about counterfeit righteousness. There in Galatians chapter 1, Paul says, I'm astonished 
that you are so quickly deserting Him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Paul said this good news of the gospel, that, that you were dead in your sins, no way out, but Jesus came and He took the punishment of your sins upon Himself. For no reason other than He simply, He loved you more than you can imagine love. You don't know the depth of this love. Jesus loved you so much that He came and He took the punishment for your sins upon Himself that now you have a place in God's family, not on the basis of your works, anything that you do to earn yourself into God's family, but because you trust and place your faith in what Jesus has done, His completed work on the cross. Now you have a place in God's family through Him. Paul said, there are some who are trying to take this good news, this gospel, and trying to replace it with another good news, the good news of legalism, learning your way, uh, earning your way into God's family, salvation by works. That's what Galatians is all about. It's the same thing Paul writes about in Romans chapter 10. When he says, for being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. These that, they don't want to be set right by God because that involves admitting that I'm broken, that I need someone to set me right, that I can't do it myself, that I can't do enough right things to earn my way into His grace, and, and that you know, somebody loves me that much. God actually did love me that much to offer free salvation through Jesus Christ, His Son. That's a knock against my pride to accept His righteousness. And so he said there's some that they try to claim their own righteousness and reject God's. All around us, even in churches today, you see this poisonous counterfeit at work. If you want to go to heaven, well, you better be up on your checklist. If you want to go to heaven, you better be given right. You better not miss a Sunday if you want to go to heaven. If you, if you want to go to heaven, you better worship exactly the way the Bible says, or, or better yet, the way I interpret that the Bible says. You know, it'd be a shame to go to hell over a guitar, e even though the New Testament doesn't say anything about that. Um, you, better, you better do what I say if you want to go to heaven. If you want to go to heaven, you'd better make sure that your self-made righteousness is in good shape because there's only so much that the blood of Jesus can do. That is a poisonous, counterfeit gospel sent from the devil to lure us away from the good news of being saved by faith in Jesus Christ. So what do we do about that? Well, human nature says you stamp it out. Human nature says you destroy that. Man, what, what a dangerous, poisonous counterfeit. I can't tell you how hurt I've been in my life. And I know many of you have been hurt as well by these poisonous seeds that Satan plants. These attitudes, these thought processes that look like they're from God, but they are not from God. They are from Satan. And as hurt as I get from the things that, that's been done to me, I get so angry when I see others being pushed away from God that the faith of others damaged by, by things like legalism, counterfeit gospel, counterfeit righteousness, may be pushed away from God for the rest of their lives because of these attitudes. And, and all I want to do is go to war. Yeah, expose these dangerous weeds. You know, expose them on Facebook. Take away their influence. Tear them up by the roots. And that's exactly what Jesus says not to do. Well, let's continue on. Matthew chapter 13, verse 28. He said to them, an enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? Do you want us to go and gather the, the weeds out, in other words? He said, no, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them into bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. You shouldn't think that God likes weeds any more than we do. God hates these poisonous counterfeits that we live with. But God is infinitely wiser than we are. And He says, do not go on a weed-destroying campaign. Don't, don't do that. Of course, when we're talking about people, 
God is gracious. God is merciful. He's always giving those weeds uh, time to repent. Uh, God doesn't ever want us to make it our goal to destroy people because God loves people. God wants us to be merciful as He is merciful. But that's not exactly the point of this parable. Jesus says, I don't want you to go destroying weeds because in doing so, you're going to damage the wheat as well. I want you to be patient as I am patient and let them grow together until the final harvest. When people buy into the lies of Satan and they hurt us, when people are flat out wrong, when people are being weeds at their weediest, you need to know that God is looking out for you. And He's looking out for the people that you love when He says, you need to allow it to be so for now. Don't, don't become weed hunters. Don't, don't take that route. You're going to hurt people. You're going to hurt the wheat. Uh, for one thing, some of the most ineffective preachers I've ever known were the ones that thought it was their job to be the watchdog of the church. You know, the real professional weed killers in the church. Many years ago, I went to a debate. Uh, it was held between a, a Church of Christ preacher and a Catholic priest. It was uh, a couple of days long. And, and I just remember uh, this, this man, the, the preacher from the Church of Christ, he had one of those booming, condescending tones in, in his voice. He loved to, to wag that finger. I remember that finger wag going a good bit there. And I remember thinking when it was all over, you know, I, I still don't think I'll be converting to Catholicism anytime soon, but I would be shocked if people are lining up to join the Churches of Christ after this as well. God wants us to be weed, I mean, wheat growers, not weed killers, uh, because our pride really gets activated. Our pride really gets excited when we get in the business of weed killing, and it turns people away from Jesus. Uh, another thing, we, we forget all too often the people caught in the crossfire when we go weed hunting. Uh, when I get caught up in taking down a weed, how much am I thinking about that weed's children, their spouse, their, their friends, all the people that are going to get hurt when I go after that weed? I'm not saying we never confront weeds, but we do remember that Peter says you need to do it with gentleness and respect. Treat those weeds the way that you would want to see your child treated. Uh, treat those weeds the way you'd want to see your mother treated, the way you'd want to see your father treated, because they are somebody's child. They are somebody's father. They are somebody's mother. And finally, we, to that point, we need to remember that we're not always the best judge of who's a weed and, and who's a wheat. And God is the perfect judge. God sees hearts perfectly. Me, I, I have all sorts of biases. I, I just do. Uh, God would have us know that we are woefully inadequate to sift through the weeds and the wheat and determine which is which. Actually, we start trying to be weed judges, and, and that just gives a place for bitterness in our hearts. That squeezes hope out of our hearts. Whereas hope looks at somebody and says, you know, there, there's wheat in the making right there. I, I just know it. There's wheat in there somewhere. Uh, bitterness says, mm, I, I, I know that's a weed. I, I, I know it's in there. They're hiding. They're covering it up, but that's a weed right there. Bitterness sees weeds everywhere. Hope sees wheat everywhere. If I, I start taking on the job of judging between the two, I start be becoming a very bitter and skeptical person, and it does damage to my heart. Let God be the judge and grow up in peace with all those around you, because if you start uprooting too many weeds around you, you're going to destroy your own heart in the process. So Jesus said the kingdom of heaven, it's like weeds growing in among the wheat. We need to recognize that the kingdom of God is breaking into the world even now. We're not waiting for it to come. It is here already. The kingdom of God is here right now. It is growing in this world. Sometimes we, we think we're looking for something perfect, uh, that, that, that the kingdom can't be here already. Look, look at the way things are. It's not perfect yet. No, the kingdom is here. We're participating in God's kingdom of heaven even now as the weeds of Satan are still being allowed to grow for the time being. And the challenge then is to not let that be a distraction or a discouragement from our God-given kingdom purpose. 
we have a, a purpose of growing God's kingdom, of marching forward in victory, uh, of spreading the good news of the gospel everywhere, knowing and, and being assured of the fact that we walk in victory. We are salt and light. We grow and we produce fruit. The sight of weeds is not in any way a sign that the enemy is gaining ground. I, I love, to, to close it out this way, I, I love the way that N.T. Wright talked about this passage in his commentary on Matthew. He says it this way, We wait in patience, not like people in a dark room wondering if anyone will ever come in with a lighted candle, but like people in early morning who know that the sun has arisen and are now waiting for the full brightness of midday. We pursue the fullness of His kingdom, not with, with the fear that the weeds are going to prevent it from coming, but knowing that they hold no power, that they are a dying breed. And so we attend to the one who does hold all power. If you would please pray with me. Father God, we praise you. We follow you as our master and our king. And Father, all power, all victory are yours. Father, we, we follow you around in, in a, a victorious triumph, a parade of your victory. And Father, we pray that, that through us you would spread the knowledge of your victory everywhere that we go, everywhere into every corner of this globe. Father, we look around and, and we know that things aren't right. Uh, more than that, we look into our own hearts and we know that, that things are not all right. Father, you have given us a rebirth from above. We are new. We live lives that are firmly planted in your kingdom and in, in, in your goodness and in your power. And yet, Father, we are still in this world. We are still operating in a sin-infected place. And so, Father, we, we look around and, and things aren't all what they should be. And yet, through us, you are breaking your kingdom into this world and, and, and you are making things what they ought to be. Father, give us the faith to believe in your victory. Give us the faith not to get dragged down and discouraged and disrupted and distracted uh, when we encounter weeds, uh, but give us the faith to, to be an influence, to love people, to grow side by side with those that might hurt us, those that might discourage us, but, but, to, but to pray and to be merciful as you are merciful and to allow you to be the judge of all things. Father, we just pray that you would, in this way, uh, keep our minds set on our purpose and not on picking these petty battles that are only going to drag us down and damage those around us. Father, we thank you so much for your love and your victory. We pray that you'd make us more like you every single day. We pray in the name of Jesus, and amen. Let us pray. Thank you for Jordan and the message he brought forth today. Open our minds and allow us to understand and absorb the knowledge and apply it in our daily lives. Father, we ask that you bless those that have been stricken with COVID, this horrible pandemic that's sweeping our country, that you keep your loving arms around each and every one, heal them according to thy will, and Father, bring comfort to those family members of those people. Bless our servicemen and keep them safe everywhere they are in the world. And Father, bless this community and keep it safe. And our church family, Father. Father, we just thank you for this day and give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. And we rejoice in it. In Jesus' name, amen.